Hey everybody, I've got another really super cool, super awesome, really easy craft for you tonight. We're doing another denim project, so we're taking a pair of old blue jeans and we're turning it into this really cool mobile window spinner, whatever you want to call it. So we painted one side of the denim, or we painted both sides of the denim, put some cool inspiring words on the back jazzed it all up this would be a really great gift idea um, if you got a good chunk of denim you could make many of these for multiple gifts I think anyone would love to get something this fun and personal so are you ready to jump in and learn how to make this all right I'll be right back okay so what I've got is just two pieces of old denim clean denim and I've cut them just randomly. This is probably like a 10 by 10. Go with 10 by 10 ish, eight by 10. You're gonna, you'll be able to get plenty out of that size. So what's the most important thing is that we're gonna, we need to seal both sides because if we only do one side, then it ends up floppy and it kind of curls and it kind of ruins the effect. So I've already gone ahead and used uh, gloss medium on this one because I want some of them to be the denim to come through. And I've just covered over this with gesso, but you could absolutely use like a crafter's acrylic paint, um, any color that you want. I'm going to do a watercolor -y effect, so I'm going to put another layer of white on here so I have a nice solid white background. And I think for both of these, I'm just going to use uh, your regular little crafter's acrylic, and I'm just going to paint the back black. And like I said, it's really important that you have acrylic paint soaked through the denim on both sides just so that it stays stiff in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and start, well, I better shake it up first, and start painting these. Before we move on to the next step, you want to make sure that everything is really dry. You'll know it's dry when it's no longer cool to the touch and it's kind of stiff. And so once we've got both sides painted and sealed up, we're ready to go. And I'm back. So I just thought I'd talk with you while I paint the back side of this black because you didn't watch me painting the first one. So I do want to go in both directions just to make sure that it gets absorbed into those fibers really well. Really doesn't matter what color you paint the back, um, but of course you could have messages on both sides. It is going to spin around if you want to hang it in a window. So you could absolutely go ahead and do both sides. I think this would make an awesome gift for someone. Um, it's easy enough that a kids can make it. Um, you can personalize it to whoever's color palette they want. Just make it fun. That's what's important here is that we are just having some fun. Now I'm using a stiffer denim here. I'm not using a stretch denim, but I don't imagine a stretch denim would be too much trouble as long as you keep it laying flat and you let it dry stiff. But any old pair of clean blue jeans will do for what we're going to do. You know what would even be fun if we did like a chalkboard design on the back or maybe just some graffiti. So we'll see how it goes. The end product is really 100% completely, totally up to you and how you want to decorate it and what you want to do with it. Now when I do go in on the other side and I do the watercolor wash effect, um, don't use actual watercolor paints because they will bleed and run if there's humidity and moisture nearby, you can't seal it. I'm going to be doing them with um, an acrylic ink, but you could do a watered down acrylic paint for the same effect. Um, the most important thing is that you are just digging in and having fun. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish the other one. Uh, once this is dry, I'm going to put another coat of white on the other side of this one and I'll be back after that once everything is dry. Okay, my denim is dry. It's nice and stiff. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna doodle randomly all over this piece and on this piece I'm gonna do a watercolor wash effect. I'm gonna speed it up for you so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the supplies I'm using. Use whatever you have on hand. If you got Sharpies, use Sharpies. I'm using uh, a Sakura Souffle pen and a Sakura glaze pen. 
So those are great because they're permanent once they're down there. That's what I like about them. You can also get paint markers from the dollar store, use Sharpies, whatever you have on hand. I'm going to go in and color it with some bright, uh, just some folk art craft acrylics. And then for the watercolor, I've just got a spray bottle with some water. Um, I've watered down some acrylic paint so it's a nice inky consistency. So when I go do the watercolor wash effect, um, I'll have nice, bright, beautiful design. Um, I will also be using some Golden High Flow acrylic. It's just a very fluid, inky acrylic paint. Use the acrylic paint you have on hand, water it down if you want to do this effect. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to fast forward the motion so you won't hear me talking again for a few minutes. So have fun watching. the doodling is done on both of my pieces I have not put anything on the back for now I'm gonna go in and put some inspiring words after we cut out the shapes that we're gonna have so I want some smaller hearts and I want some bigger hearts so I'm just gonna cut down maybe through a third of each of these sheets I'm not worried about what direction it is and I'm going to cut out some, so I'm just folding it in half so I can make some heart shapes. A couple smaller ones, or at least a small one and a medium size one. That one looks terrible. <laughs> ah, that's okay. Okay, so I'm just going to go and cut out a whole bunch of hearts. I'm going to do the same with my second sheet that I doodled all over. And I'm not worried about what direction I'm going in. I really wanted it just random. I just wanted a nice bright pattern to make it really pop. And on the watercolory one, I just went in with my souffle pen and just put some random little flowers just to give it a little more visual interest. I did not um, mention earlier because I didn't know I was going to do it, but to make the, when you saw me doing the little splashes, I was just using rubbing alcohol. I was just dropping it onto the wet paint so it gave it a little bit of a resist. Okay, so I'll cut out the first one with you. Now I can make it a little more of a heart shape if I want. I'm happy with that one. So I'm just going to get those all cut out 
and when I come back we'll be stitching them together to make the spinner and maybe before I do that I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna use my white souffle pen or you can use any paint pen you have and I'm just gonna write some inspiring words on there my hearts are all cut out and I've gone and drawn some little inspirational quotes and some doodles on the backs so the next step is I want to figure out if I want to what order I want them to go in how long I want it to end up being we're gonna end up with about a half an inch in between each one I can do abs I've got so much here I can do more than one okay so let's just figure out which one I want I think I want them alternating but I want to start with start with the smallest one on the top and kind of graduate them okay, that like that. And I'm alternating between my patterns and my sizes think that's the order it's going to go in and one more thing I just want to mention don't throw out your scraps we've I've got a video about making um, really awesome earrings out of old jeans just like this and this is exactly the same technique so don't throw out your scraps I'm going to put a link below in the comments to that video and you can go make yourself some really awesome earrings okay so I'm just stitching them all together now I'm using a thread so that they can spin nicely wherever they're hanging and kind of show off all of the sides of the work that I've done. I'm using a different camera right now. I'm just testing it out so we'll see how it's going to work. So I've gone ahead and pre-punched a bunch of holes in the tops and bottom of each of the heart just so it's easier for me to thread. I've done a just a basic knot at the bottom. I'm using a heavyweight upholstery thread just because it's more durable. I chose black because I think black would just look better with what I'm doing. When I get to the bottom, just feeding my needle through where the knot is. Just kind of securing it there. I'm leaving, I'm giving myself about an inch in between just so there's enough room for each heart to spin. And I've already got them in the order that I want them. So when I get to about here, I'm just tucking my and I'm using a very blunt needle so I don't because <laughs> I'm really good at stabbing myself. I'm just feeding the needle under and I'm feeding it through the thread just to kind of make a nice secure knot. And then I'm going to trim it. And do it again, just until I'm finished. So again, when I have it where I want it, just pulling it nice and tight, running my needle under the thread. It's hooked on here. Back up. My needle under the thread, and then I'm feeding it through the thread that's left on there, just so it makes a nice little knot on there. And I'm just going to keep going until I'm done. I've got quite a lot here. And you see, I've only got five of the pieces that I've done on here so far. So I can either keep going and make a really, really long one, or I could make a couple of smaller 
length ones. I do want them to be able to hang from the window. I want them to be able to be visible in a pretty wall decoration. So I might go in with one or two more here and then make another shorter one. And then I've got all of my pieces strung together. I ended up with two. And I did decide that I want to do a little something on the bottom. So I am taking some pretty craft feathers I have and I'm just going to use the glue gun to glue them together and then I'll just wrap the end of it with just some black embroidery floss just to finish it off and make it look <laughs> Again, on this one, I'm going to put a hook at the top. Could be cute if on them you put another jump ring and just hung some charms in front of it. But you definitely don't need to go too crazy. I bought a bunch of these charms in bulk on eBay because I use them in my 3D art. I certainly would not use them to make actual jewelry. I do not want children sticking their mouths on it. The price was great, so that probably means what they're made of isn't. <laughs> so, okay, here's the second one with the little charm. I'll go hang them up and I'll get some pictures for you. And I hope I'd love to see what you guys do with this project. So, join in on the Facebook group. The link is in the description box below uh, for adventures and creativity. Show me what you've done, show off your beautiful work, and I can't wait to see how you guys interpret this project. Okay, bye. Hi everyone, it's Lori. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to join in on the creative adventures, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. You can also hit that little notification bell right beside the subscribe button so that you know whenever new videos come up. You can also visit my website at www.mypaintedpath.com for more information on adventures and creativity and to see what we're up to. We have links there to the Facebook group where we share everything. Everyone can get in and share what they're, they've been doing, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.